We're going to learn the difference between a theist, an atheist, and an agnostic on the next Good News program. The program you're about to watch is part of a free MP3 series we're making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Carefree Living. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code CARE72 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. It's great to be with you today. We're continuing our teaching on carefree living. And if you haven't gotten this teaching, you need to get it. It will set you free. Get ready to get happy. You're going to learn why you don't have to worry. Worrying is not uh, doing your duty as a human being or showing how much you care. Worry robs you of strength and energy and happiness, and it, it robs your time. You could be doing something else more productive rather than worrying and being anxious about your life, your problems, your future. So we've covered a lot of different areas and given you a lot of scriptures, and we're just excited about what God is doing. I appreciate you being part of the Good News audience. If, if you've been watching over, uh, over time, uh, you get this program. I want to teach the Word of God. It's actually things that I've been learning and putting away for 30 years. I've traveled for 30 years to churches and schools around the world, 27 nations, over 2 million miles. And I've been learning and preaching things that God has deposited in my spirit. And they're coming out on this program. It has been such a relief and such a privilege to have this program as an outlet where I can get these truths out one by one, systematically, line upon line, precept upon precept, and get them preserved so that people can come and, and watch or listen to the teachings. And they're going out all over the world. In fact, we have a YouTube channel where we're uploading two episodes every week. We have podcasts. We're doing the same thing there. And you can go to these places and get series of 15 and 20 messages in a row on a certain subject. And it will be a blessing to you. I teach in series. And so uh, it is just a very exciting time for our ministry. In fact, since 2017, uh, out of the blue, Andrew Womack called me personally and said, would you be on our new uh, internet TV channel? He said, I'll give you a time slot for free. And I said, yes. I didn't even think about it. I just said, yes. And I didn't know if it would be a daily or a monthly or a weekly or what kind of a time slot it was. I just assumed it was daily. And sure enough, that's what they had in mind. And it has been uh, one of the highlights of my life. And that's how I'm able to get to you. Now, it costs us a lot to produce the programs, but the time slot is free. And then we're able to take it and put it into these other outlets and make it available to more and more people. And as you may know, my teaching is simple. It's, uh, it's very simply said and the truths are, are, are simply put. Uh, over the years, I guess, starting in children's church, I was a children's church teacher, preacher when I was 16, and it developed a simple style. And what that's, what that's led to is, to, to our surprise, people from other countries all over the world are connecting with us and, and communicating with us. We listen to you. We watch you. We understand you. English is not our first language, but we understand your teaching. Nothing could make me happier than to know that, uh, that we're getting the message out into nations around the world, people that don't maybe have access to Bible school or Christian materials like we do here in America, but they're getting this program, and I teach with them in mind. I want to lead you into the deeper things of God. I want to lead you into the meat of the Word of God. I want to help you in your, in your walk with God. And so we're able to do that. We are getting close to our 300th episode of the Good News Program. Isn't that amazing? Wow, it took me 150 just to get comfortable, just to, just to figure this out. I'm used to, you know, the camera doesn't say amen or hallelujah. The camera doesn't laugh at my jokes. And for all these years, I've been preaching to people 
and people laugh, even even a courtesy laugh, you know, they don't think it's funny, but they appreciate the effort. I, I love that. Um, you know, sometimes people get mad and walk out. The camera just sits there. It does nothing. But um, over the over these months and months of doing this, I realize you're out there. I'm so glad that you are. And I'm learning this new dynamic. Sometimes the amen comes in an email like two months later, but I'll take it. Sometimes it's good job, brother. I enjoyed that sermon and it comes three months later. But you know what? I'll take it any way I can get it. Uh, it has been so much fun, and I've been able to cover things that I've never covered before and teach things out in a way that I haven't done it before. And uh, you've helped make that possible, so thank you. It wouldn't be the same if you weren't there. <laughs> you know, a preacher wouldn't have a job if there wasn't an audience. So thank you for being there, and we got more great things in store. I'll just tell you this before we get into this teaching today. I don't usually take this much time up front, but I've got some new series coming that are going to blow your socks off. I'm chewing on them right now, preparing for them. I'm going to do one called uh, Growing in Grace, Become the Person You Were Meant to Be. I'm going to do one called A More Excellent Way, which talks about the power of walking in love and living the commandment of love and how that is produces victory in your life. I'm going to do one called Transformed from the inside out that will change the way you think about God's word. These things are coming. I can't wait to put them into, uh, into, into this medium and, and allow you to feed on them. And uh, the way we preserve them, you can do it from, for years and years to come. Thank God for the miracle of modern technology. We're talking about carefree living. And I wanna go to Matthew chapter six and I want to give you the words of Jesus. What we're doing at this stage of this teaching is we're personalizing this, these truths. Instead of talking about global catastrophe and world events, what about you personally? The Word of God applies to you personally. There are reasons that you personally should not be worried, should not be afraid, should not be anxious about your life and your future and, and the, basically, it's because God cares about you. God knows who you are, and he knows your needs. And we're going to cover that more and more. But Matthew 6, 25, this is what Jesus said about you. Therefore, I say to you, isn't that interesting? He, he makes this personal. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Those are just powerful words of comfort. In fact, Jesus is trying to, with truth, with, with care, with logic, He's trying to run worry out of your life. And he does it by saying, first of all, look at the birds. They don't worry <laughs> and they're fed. You say, well, I've seen dead birds. Yeah, but, 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 but um, overall, birds have survived all these years. In fact, they're doing really well. And you look at birds, they're not worried. They're not downcast. What are we going to do? And how's this going to work? And I don't know how I'm going to make it. They're too busy to worry about all that. And God takes care of them. And, and his point was not that a bird doesn't ever die. His point was, his point was, you are worth so much more than a bird. Can you see the place you hold in heaven's in heaven from heaven's perspective? And he's trying to help us see how valuable we are to God. You may not value yourself at all. You may feel like your life is worthless. You might feel like you've never done anything of value and wonder how you could ever survive. But you know what? All that aside, God loves you. God values you. And that's what Jesus is saying. Forget about what you think of yourself. Forget about what you've done. God loves and cares about you personally. He takes care of birds you know, it amazes me, when we lived in our other house, we had a lot of uh, hummingbird feeders around our deck, and those hummingbirds would come through during migration. 
And it was incredible. They'd come by the dozens and they'd come and they'd eat this uh, sugar water and, and then they, they would end up and they'd be gone. They'd stay for three or four days and they'd leave. They were migrating south to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Some of them had come from as far as Canada. They were making this 2,000 mile migration. They have to eat during the, the migration. They have to find their way. They get down, many of them, to the Gulf of Mexico and they wait until the wind's just right and they fly over the Gulf of Mexico. Not only even fly over land, they fly over the ocean uh, and uh, some of them rest on, on oil platforms and all kinds of things out in the water, but many of them just fly nonstop. And, and when you, you sit and look at these birds, it's, I, I really enjoyed it, but they're only about, they're about that big. They don't weigh but an ounce or two. And, and when you think about it, their brain can't be more than, you know, than that big. And yet these birds navigate 2,000 miles, some of them, in the spring and in, and in the fall. They go both ways every year. And there's still millions of them. Well, it looks like they did pretty good. <laughs> I mean, if you'd, have, if, you'd, if you'd have shown me a bird and say, now this little bird's going to have to survive, this species is going to survive only by going from Canada to the Yucatan twice a year, and they're going to have to eat certain foods, and they can't be in, a, in temperature below freezing for very long or they'll die. You'd think it can't happen. They won't survive. They won't make it past the first winter. But do you know that they've been living for thousands of years and they're doing really well? If God so feeds the birds of the air, how much more will God feed you? And then he goes on to say, oh, you've little faith. Jesus is very confused about how we as humans, as, as his created beings, created in his image, could worry about our future and you know when you look at it from that perspective it is true we shouldn't be worried what are we doing work we're wasting our time we ought to resent the time that we've spent worrying and reject those thoughts from this point on and say you know i am not going to spend my time worrying about my well-being i'm alive today you want, I wonder, how did we make it up to now? Did you just get lucky? Have you just, have you just barely survived by the skin of your teeth? How did you make it? Are you just smart enough that you just were able to figure your way through life? No, you know what? The reason we're here today is because God our Father has provided for us. The reason you have clothes and the reason you have food and a place to live and, and a bed to sleep in is because God provided that for you. He provided the means for you to make it. We need to give Him credit, first of all. And then secondly, we ought to realize that what He's done before He's going to do again. He's going to continue. He's not going to quit. He's not going to turn his back on us. He's not going to give up on us. He, his promises don't have an expiration date in this life. They will, they will get us all the way through. Let, let me read on. He said, which of you, this is Mar Matthew 6, 27, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So, verse 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Isn't that good? That is so comforting. That is so powerful. And the way he winds this up is, is by saying, after he compares our lives to the lives of birds and our lives to the to the to a grass in the field which is which you know flowers and and has beautiful colors and God did that 
They didn't do that. They didn't, the grass doesn't worry about bearing a, a flower or, 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 any, or about its needs. And he's saying, if God does this for birds and grass, he's certainly going to do it for you. The birds and the grass are here for us. This is all made so that creation is all here so we would have a place to live. So he's saying, why would you worry? Oh, you of little faith. He said, after all these things, the Gentiles seek. And I want to look at that for a minute because I think that's so important. That comment, it cuts deeply because what God is saying is you're acting like somebody that doesn't have a God. You act like you're there all by yourself. You're, you act like you're there with no God, no covenant with God, no knowledge of God. You're living like a Gentile. You're living like a person that doesn't know God or doesn't want God. That's no way to live your life. Life ought to be different for people who believe in God. It ought to be different for you. We are not uh, an atheist or an agnostic. I was looking at these different terms because I don't want to live like somebody who doesn't have a God. I don't want to live like a Gentile. I want to live in the consciousness that I have a Heavenly Father and that He cares about me. And what we're going to get into in the next couple of, of, uh, of programs is, is simply this, that not only do we have a God, but He knows and he cares, and he provides. All three of those things are true about our God. Not, not only is he a, a, a God, an omni, omnipotent, all-powerful God, but he also knows. He's omniscient. He knows about you. He knows about your needs. And not, and, and not only does he know, but he cares. He's, you know, there's been so many... Uh, so much disinformation, propaganda put out about God that he's, he, maybe he exists, but he doesn't care. <laughs> or maybe he exists, but he's not going to do anything for you. Maybe he cares, but he's not going to do anything for you. And it, it's all wrong. He, he does, he knows your situation. He cares about you personally, and he provides for you personally. So the, 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 the atheist is somebody who doesn't believe there is a God. And I can't tell you how detrimental that is. People who don't believe in God are open to all kinds of doubt, and unbelief, uncertainty, insecurity, fear, anger. And really, I believe that's what's going on in the world today is we're surrounded. The world's filled with people that don't believe in God. And that void is being filled with all kinds of of good intentions and fears and phobias and scenarios that are unscriptural. When you, in, when you put God into the equation, then there are certain absolutes you can count on. But when you take God out, you have nothing to stand on. There is nothing sure. There's nothing that you can wrap your arms around. It's a terrible way to live. So that would be the atheist. An agnostic is, is one who believes, who, who, who neither believes nor disbelieves. He, he just doesn't know if there's a God or not. He doesn't know. He admits there could be, but there's no proof. And he admits maybe there isn't because there's no proof. But he doesn't know. He hasn't made up his mind, which is definitely wishy-washy. And that's no way to live. And then the theists, that would be us. We believe that there is a God. I love this definition. <laughs> I read this today, and I think it's funny. It's uh, a theist, somebody who believes in God, is one who sits in church and thinks he has it all figured out. An atheist is one who sits in Starbucks and thinks he has it all figured out. And an agnostic doesn't have anything figured out. And so out of those three, I want to be that person in church. Now, I may not have it all figured out, but I got some of the most important things figured out. God answers for us the most important questions in life. And I could say it this way, God's given us enough information that we can live life to its fullest. We can be happy, we can be well-adjusted, we can be full of faith and assurance, we can look forward to the future, and we can do what we were born to do. God has given us enough information, enough truth in order to live a happy, successful life. He's our creator, after all. He knows what we needed. And he put what we needed in his word. And, and you can count on God 
to, to do and to be what the Word says He will do and to be what the Word says He is. In fact, the Bible is the Word of God. Uh, it, or the, the, the Word of God is God come. He is God in Word form. The Word became flesh, the Bible says of Jesus. So the Bible is God in this world. You can see it, read it, you can understand it. And some people say, well, I just can't see God. There's no proof of God. I wish I could see something, put my hands on something. I wish I could hear something to prove that there's a God. Well, that's the Bible. You're talking about the Word of God. It's the part of God that He's given to the earth so we can see, and we can read it, we can hear it, we can understand it, and that's how we get a hold of God. Say, well, I don't believe the Bible. Well, then you can't even start. You can't start. He who comes to God must believe that he is. Say, well, I can't believe that. Yes, you can. Anybody can do that. The atheist can believe that there's a God. He's just chosen not to. The agnostic can believe that there's a God. And he's just chosen not to. You take God's word and you begin there and you start to believe his words. And, and, and everybody's capable of that. So God's word is the part of God that's been given to the world where we can get a hold of God. We can begin to see, understand, hear God in his word. And that's why the preaching of the word leads to salvation and the preaching of the word leads to faith and faith in healing, faith in deliverance, faith in, it all comes through God's word. So we can take God's word and drive out worry and drive out fear because God is who he said he was and God will do what he said he would do. And you find out all of that in his word. His word has given us all we need to live a happy, productive, healthy, well-adjusted life. Does that make sense? Many years ago when I was moving out of my uh, home, I was 18, I was going to move off to Bible school, and I was a little apprehensive. I, You know, I'm, I've always been sort of, uh, I want to test the waters, I want to figure things out, and I didn't have it all figured out as far as how I was going to live, how I'm going to pay the bills, and well, I found out where I was going to live. That's that was one piece of the puzzle. And so I'm I'm getting ready to move out, and I'm praying, saying, "Lord, if you don't want me to do this, please tell me now. If if I need to do something different, please tell me now." And and uh, so anyway, I'm moving, and I and so I began to tell God, "Now, God, I'm just very unsure about this. I've never supported myself. I've always lived at home. My dad's always taken care of me. He's paid the bills. My mom and dad, they've taken care of us in our home and they've provided clothing. They've provided food. They've let me drive their car. I mean, I've always had what I needed, but my dad did it. He was the one that went to work and paid the bills. And now I'm going to leave and I'm not going to have that. And I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain. And the Lord spoke to me and it really helped me. I have to remind myself of this every once in a while. He said, no, wrong. Your dad has not provided for you these first 18 years. And I thought, well, that's strange. He said, I have. I just used your dad to do it. Well, that really changed everything. He said, your dad hasn't provided for you for 18 years. I have. I just used him to do it. And from now on, I'll use other means to do it. But I'm your provider, not your dad, not your job, not your investments, not your hard work, not your partners, not your supporters. I'm your provider. And boy, that helped me immensely. You need to believe that today. You may think, well, my job provides for me. My employer gives me my money and I'm able to pay my bills. Who's behind that? God is behind. You wouldn't have an employer if it weren't for God. There would be no system for you to work and use your talents and abilities and exchange it for money if God hadn't made that system possible. God did it. God is behind your provision, and you need to decide that right now. That's kind of what he's saying there in Mark 6, Matthew 6. He's saying, I provide for the birds, I provide for the plants, and I'll provide for you. It, and, and God, think about this. God doesn't personally have to hand you your paycheck to be behind that supply, does he? Surely you can see beyond that. All of your needs and physical miracles are going to be done in physical ways, but God's behind it. 
of physical healing manifests in your body, but God is behind that, you know that. Well, so is your paycheck, and so is your provision, so is a return on your investments, and everything else that comes to you financially, it, 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 it really originates with God Almighty. And what God was saying was, I don't care what channel I have to use, I'm gonna provide for you. So it may be your dad today, it may be another boss tomorrow, it may be another situation the next day, but I will meet your needs. And that has helped me immensely. I don't care where you work or how you get your paycheck. Let's choose to believe today and see it the way it really is. Behind all that is God himself. He's a heavenly father. He knows what you need. He cares about you and he provides all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Isn't that good today? Well, I hope you got something out of that. We're gonna continue this in our next program. Uh, We've run out of time for this one, but we'll start again, so be sure and be with us. And until then, may God's best be yours. In this new series, you'll learn from the scriptures why worry is not an option and how to replace fear with faith in the midst of any trial. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code CARE72 at checkout. If you hadn't gotten my new book yet, you should consider getting this book, Living With No Regrets. I believe this is some of the most uh, applicable, important teaching I've ever done. People are buying the book and we're getting really good response. It simply helps every person deal with the past. If you have things in your past that you regret, maybe there are things that you wish you hadn't done that you did, or things you wish you had have done that you wish you didn't do, that causes regret. And Jesus can wipe away every tear of regret in your life. God wants you to be happy. He wants to set us free so that we can go into our future with no strings attached. This book will tell you all about it even give you scriptures that apply to the areas that you need help in, and I'll give you some homework so that you can apply the scriptures to your own life and experience total freedom from anything and everything that's ever happened to you. You're gonna love this book. Get ready to get happy and get your copy today. Sorrow, sadness, guilt, and shame are not God's will for your life. In his new book, learn how to apply God's word to your past and allow him to wipe away every tear so you can experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. Get your copy of Greg's new book, Living With No Regrets, on our website, gregfritz.org. All of this is due to God. I mean, we, we put so much trust in ourselves and so much pressure on ourselves but folks you wouldn't even be alive if it weren't for god you wouldn't know up from down right from left you wouldn't know what to do to survive one day if it weren't for god almighty and so he's just jesus is trying to tell us that you have a heavenly father don't think that you're in this by yourself because you're not now I want to make some points about your Heavenly Father that, that will hopefully help you to say goodbye to worry and fear and anxiety when it comes to your personal well-being. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.